Welcome everybody to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette. We're so glad that you're with us today. We've got our special guest, Hazel C. Cack Banks. Hazel, Hi. great to see you. Great to be back here. Well, you are an awesome volunteer for 20 years of our museum here, long before I came on board. Uh, and Hazel's a great financial supporter of the museum. And you've taken uh, to our Stay Curious program from the beginning, Marty and I over here. You've been on the show about six times now. I think you're our record well, setter, Hazel. Well, it's double or nothing, huh? Double or nothing. I, that's I was right. thinking three times. And the stories this lady has to tell as a cl clerk stenographer, nobody knows what that is. <laughs> well, that was the old days. Yeah. Now, does, Today you're an administrative assistant or a first impressions coordinator. That's a receptionist now in the 21st century. But uh, we're here to talk about her career as a clerk stenographer, a secretary for the Apollo astronauts. Those of you who have not seen Hazel on Stay Curious before are in for a real treat. Uh, as you got some great stories, uh, we got a lot of great visuals to show you, and a little surprise about the Apollo 12 parody that... Uh, <laughs> Uh, took a while for me to catch on to, but actually Al Warden told me to watch it. You gave me the book on it where Hazel's one of the featured stars of his parody. So uh, you're a good sport about that part of our Stay Curious today. Uh, as this beautiful lady's had a great career, not only did you work for, the, uh, for NASA, but uh, tell us your other great job you had. Well, after if, I... If you're a football fan, if, I mean. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. Still am a football fan. After when I left um, NASA and moved to Michigan, and a few years after that, I was able to get hired by Ralph Wilson, who was the owner of the Buffalo Bills. Uh huh. And um, I worked for him until I married and left, and we moved away in 1983. And then I moved. We moved back to Michigan in 1992. And I went back to work for Mr. Wilson in 1995, and that's how I retired. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, Hazel's become one of my great friends here at the museum. You're really the first uh, uh, space worker that uh, I hung out with, and you do rack cards up and down Cape Canaveral and Cocoa Beach. We appreciate that. But, uh, you know, uh, yes, I find it fascinating in you that you dealt with astronauts, and then you were very involved with the four Super Bowls of Buffalo. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, just what, I mean, around some, some A-list people most of your life and conducting yourselves as a classy woman that uh, obviously got the job done. Well, and as you know, back in the day, I didn't have a college education. When I graduated from Satellite High School um, and I went to work for NASA a few a few months later because the the company that hired me was closing down, and I wasn't 18 yet. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so NASA was the only company that, that would hire somebody that wasn't 18. And, and that was during the Gemini That Gemini, missions. yes. Uh -huh. and, and I was a temporary for NASA for two or three months, and then they had two openings come up. One was in... Um, well, at then at that time in the in the 60s it was a manned spacecraft center now it's a johnson space flight center mm -hmm. but for a, a manned spacecraft center uh, and working for gemini or i could stay with kennedy space center and work in procurement office so i said well do i want to sit and type contracts all day i don't <laughs> think so you know yeah. so i i opted to work for um for MSC, and, and that was before Gemini 8, and it was, it was just great. Well, we're going to take you back to those 60s and 70s, and this is a beautiful picture of the uh, Merc uh, Gemini monument that we have. Mercury Gemini monuments uh, and Apollo and a shuttle tribute out there at Space View Park. This lady's a world traveler. If you name a place, I'll bet she's been to it twice. But you know I keep saying that this Space View Park we have out there, just three blocks from us, I always tell people it's like a Taj Mahal. It's like a, a Roman Colosseum or Eiffel Tower. Truly one of a kind place where you can put your hands on Neil Armstrong's or Buzz Aldrin's or Gene Cernan yes. in bronze out oh, there. Yes. Oh, what, yeah. How, what do you, your, all of your travels around the world, I mean, am I right how unique this place is? It is. It, it, <clears throat> it, it's, it, 
does relate to places that you just mentioned, like Taj Mahal, you know, the um, Eiffel Tower, the Eiffel Tower you know, Coliseum. those sorts of things, because um, <clears throat> and it, it's, it's a big part of the past and the present and the future, too. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, it just says a lot for what was going on here when we started and uh, there wasn't anything else around here. Not at all, and it's a beautiful homage, and, and frankly, what company wants you to put your name on marble or, or bricks or whatever? We That's how the American Space Museum and the U.S. Space Walk of Fame Foundation started, that you've been with us so long, uh, of uh, this park, taking a hundred bucks to put your name out there. So, uh, uh, thank you, Hazel, for, for just commenting about that, because, you know, it's a... a to me, it's an emotional place. There's even some pylons out there that represent the deceased workers and astronauts. And uh, it's quite something out there. And we're going to see some more pictures of it. We want to give you a little bit of news. Hazel, you've been with us from day one. Can you believe, as we say hi to Marty Winkle, this is our 862nd episode. Oh, wow. All right. Marty, how are you today? I am fine, Mark. How are you and Hazel doing? Well, always good. This is our this is Hazel number one because I'll bet Hazel number two, Connie <laughs> McDaniel's watching out there. She's our cleaning lady, oh, Hazel. Okay. All right. <laughs> you're not exactly <laughs> the cleaning lady. Well, your 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 house is clean. Okay, yeah, but she's not really our clean. That's just a little part time thing she does. <laughs> yeah, it is. Connie McDaniel, we love you for all that you do here. She's another one of our fabulous volunteers here. That's great. That uh, uh, has helped out. Uh, the last three years here but uh, you know that we love celebrating astronaut birthdays uh, space history and we got a little bit of that to kick off the show today with you today and uh, there's jasmine mowgli and if you don't know jasmine she's a rookie commander of crew seven that was going to launch uh and t they pushed it back it was it was going to be on the um uh uh 17th and now it's going to be the 21st it was going to be the 18th the launch was initially scheduled for july 23rd shifted to july 26th okay during a press conference um uh, not take that back i'm i'm all messed up here reset myself they're going to launch to the international space station august 21st at 5 23 a.m that is a monday morning they were going to launch i think the saturday before that uh, and uh, this is moved because of a bottleneck at pad 30, uh, uh, 39A that launched your Apollo astronauts to the moon. So uh, the bottleneck is because of the delay on the Falcon Heavy. Two days, uh, heavy pad damage is going to take them longer to, to, yeah. to fix it. And uh, so good luck to her. That young lady is the last of the nine Artemis women to go to space. She could be the first woman on the moon. And taken with her a, a JAXA astronaut, a Russian, and a European astronaut. So all four countries represented there uh, on this important crewed seven launch moved to Monday, August 21st at 5.23 a.m. You'll be up at that time. Oh, yeah. You're an early <laughs> riser there. Uh, I might just uh, have to sleep over to get up that time. <laughs> yes, we got a couple birthdays today. Uh, Dick uh, Covey is uh, 77, born in Fayetteville, Arkansas, but he considers Fort Walton Beach, Florida to be his hometown. Uh Four space flights for McCovey, 26 theirs returned to space after Challenger, one of the most important missions ever flown. Uh, and uh, also there we've got uh, Koichi Wakata of JAXA is 60 today. Uh, his nickname's The Man, and John Harrington, okay. astronaut, told us that. Uh, Koichi, one of the most experienced astronauts ever, 505 days in space. He has ridden, uh, Hazel, a shuttle. Yeah. A Crew Dragon and a Soyuz spacecraft. Oh, wow. Three different spaceships he's taken to the International Space Station. How cool is that? And also, the the uh, he just came back uh, on um, Crew uh, uh, 6 uh, in, uh, in March. And uh, the Crew 7 that's going up, is uh, they're taking... Crew Dragon Endurance on his third trip to space. All right, so uh, 
So happy yes. birthday to those astronauts. Very important to their countries, and we wish them well as we do. And hey, wait a minute. Chris Cowley's birthday's today? Holy cow. He looks pretty good for an 80-year-old man, doesn't he? <laughs> Not quite. No. Uh, no. Uh, he doesn't look as good as Marty. Okay, in no, there. But uh, no, happy birthday, Chris. Of happy course, is a, a second-generation artist. His his father, Paul, one of the first uh, artists uh, of NASA. Uh, but more importantly, Paul Kelly does this amazing uh, Western art of fur trappers and so oh, wow. forth. Just incredible. But a happy birthday to you, Chris, up there in Connecticut. Hope uh, you're having a wonderful day. And thank you for all your support of our American Space Museum with your artwork and generous contributions and contra uh, to uh, our program here. And hey, uh, Bill Whiting, uh, another volunteer of our museum that's just uh, come on, on board with us. Uh, just about three hours ago, went by the Neil Armstrong Museum wow. in Wapakoneta, Ohio. I-75 is on the other side of this. Yeah. Uh, is that Bill sitting on the park bench there, Marty, on the left? No, that's Neil Armstrong himself <laughs> there, okay? Uh, I've been there many, many, many times, having grown up just about 80 miles north of it in Finley, Ohio, Wapakoneta, the home of Neil Armstrong, very much a farming community. And across from it is the best waffle house. Thank you, Bill, for taking the picture. That is one of the best waffle houses in the country. I guarantee you there. You'll have a good uh, meal there. So uh, Neil Armstrong, very much in our hearts and minds as we celebrated Apollo 11's the 53rd anniversary. Mm -hmm. And nice vest there, Hazel. Well, got there and there, yeah. I'll get another one for you. Oh, you, you have it already. <laughs> I do, I do. Uh, Hazel and, and Marty, a year ago, helped our good friend Jefferson Michaelis from Brazil do their science days. You had mm -hmm. a five-minute uh, talk there to yeah. the kids of Brazil. And I'm told over over uh, 30,000 kids eventually oh, saw wow. that little clip of you and Marty good. there. So, uh, But... Uh, you, uh, we had a uh, wardrobe malfunction with you here. You well, wore, she wore green against our green screen, and I was panicking. So, uh, you look good in my vest there, Hayes. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, there's a better picture of you there, and um, that's an old. That's that's a while back. That was about when I first met you three or four years mm -hmm. ago there, in front of the Apollo console there. Yeah. And uh, a, a taste of our museum in the background. Um, uh, great contrast 50 years later there, Hayes, as we well, look at you there. <laughs> I don't have that dress, you know. I didn't save that dress for 50-odd years. Oh, okay. But if I had, I would have worn it today. You could probably wear it today, <laughs> yeah. Uh, a cute little uh, pattern. You, you told me you made your own clothes. Most, Yeah, I did not make that dress, but uh, I, I did make most of my own clothes. Uh, I sewed most of my life, and and it was cheaper. So you have an Apollo 12 emblem on one side, and what do you what are you holding in the other? There, you're promoting something. And it, and I know I don't remember, and I didn't keep it. Um, I think it was a board it was something, game. It, something like that. It was, and I don't know if uh, who gave it to me. If it was one of the Apollo 12 crew or somebody uh, that I worked with at the flight crew training building. Mm -hmm. um, well, with a lot of alpha dog men around the uh, facility there, not just the astronauts, a lot of engineers also, uh, three or four of you pretty ladies around there, they certainly want to take pictures of you. So, uh, <laughs> yes, <it's here>. first, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see some more pictures of you like this one. Uh, of course, the 50th anniversary was something else. It was special. And yeah. you were featured as a... Uh, what we call National Treasures here at the American Space Museum. Uh, so many of, of our friends of our museum were featured on this, and you got your due there, but uh, pretty surprised that you saw that on the front page. They made you a beautiful board of it there. That, that, that's, that's yeah, they cool. did. Uh, Florida Today. Interview. That's pretty cool. What a nice memento. But what does that mean to you, Hazel? Seeing you taking a phone there with your coiffed hair and Oh, and, uh, back in the days when we actually had a, a our landline was the only communication we had and and when um, and that was in the flight crew training building when I was working for the lunar module simulator number mm -hmm. two we're going to talk about that and um, 
and somebody would get a phone call, somebody in Houston or MIT, and they want, um, so let's, I'll just use your name. Mm -hmm. Hello, Flight Crew Training Building. Hi, this is, uh, this is Mark from MIT, and I need to speak to Marty. Can you page him? Yes, just a minute. Hit the paging button, page, uh -huh. and, and, uh, and we had phones uh, by the simulators, uh, too, so you could, you didn't have to come into the office to answer the phone. You know, that was right. old-time stuff. We're going to look at this flight crew, train, flight crew training simulator. took me a while to get that off my tongue, and you guys helped me a lot do that. But, uh, uh, and yeah, the old rotary phones there. But when we look at the juxtaposition of, of Apollo and what's going on today uh, with <laughs> Artemis, uh, here is a, a picture I threw in there with you with the Lee Solid's grandsons. There's Lee Solid, uh, certainly one of the godfathers of the Saturn V rocket, responsible for all the en engines from Rockwell. Yeah. And these are his grandsons that have done a documentary on there. Uh, that's uh, Silas on the left, John Luke on the right, and uh, what wonderful job they did. They and, and they've got a four-part series. They interviewed everybody Grandpa knew, <laughs> okay, yeah. for sure, yeah. uh, including I'm in it and you're in it, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, I love, you know, getting the young people involved with the history of our Apollo era. It is like none other. No, you're right. You're right. And, and there's good reason why we've not been back in 50 years because of the politics and the money. It's not because these young men don't want to do it, young ladies and so forth. So what does that make you feel like when young people like that want to honor you Apollo workers? It makes me think that um, our history isn't being lost. Mm -hmm. and uh, And that's important. To, yeah. to keep it going. I mean, regardless of how great um, everything is now, you know, all the mm -hmm. all the uh, liftoffs. Uh, this picture tells so there. much to me. You and Lee in there and his grandson's gateway, the new facility yeah. at the back, the rocket garden filled with the, the relics of our infant space age. Uh, and, and, and you're a big part of that, Hazel. And we also want to just look back a little bit at the prices to set the mood for today's show. That uh, at Publix, uh, 50 years ago, 49 cents up there in the upper right. That is a pound of coffee, folks. One pound of coffee was 49 cents in 1969, taken out of this man on the moon uh, version of the Today USA Today, July 20. Uh, uh, first 1969 some other notables there you get four cans of tuna for a buck uh, a bottle of ketchup was 19 cents uh, that 59 cents that is giant tide detergent and i hate buying soap powders and all that stuff so expensive <laughs> giant tide detergent was 59 cents in there and uh just uh the times we lived in back then uh yeah. sirloin steak dollar 29 a pound yeah but 49 cents That's for a pound of coffee you can't get a cup of coffee for 49 cents not even a half a cup of coffee that's right, uh, that's right. but uh and then i threw this one in curtis mathis that brings back the old days oh, of television yeah. oh yeah and there's a tv set and it's 800 bucks it's a uh, a color tv a stereo uh, turntable inside AM FM radio, the works, okay. And to translate that in today's dollars, like the 49 cent a pound, well, put a, a, a zero behind it, $4.90 a pound. That's some cheap coffee, but still you probably buy it for that. This is almost an $8,000 system Nowadays, there yeah. that, they're, that they're hawking there in Houston. Marty? How many of those did you have in your house? Well, no, it says it's 86 inch oak wood or genuine oak. Yeah. You have TV sets alone that's 86 <laughs> yeah, inches. Right? Yeah. Plus. yeah, the whole console is 84 <laughs> sets. So it is solid oak, pieces of furniture is what yeah. they were selling back in the day. That was unique. It didn't have legs on it, it was black and white. So, uh, but that's a Houston uh, place there. Well, let's talk about the uh, flight crew training building. And there's a photo that I found. Very few photos found of this. And what I've learned, Hazel, this was the magnet at Kennedy Space Center for celebrities. 
Well, yes. Um, and there was a, you have a picture of the inside, the interior, mm -hmm. um, the simulators, looking down the simulators, okay, are on the right side. You can see the the walkway on the left at the top with mm -hmm. the glass windows. Well, the glass, the, uh, glass the left windows. is a, a, a second floor second overlook. Okay. Yeah, and and um, that's where the celebrities went, it, whether they were being escorted by an astronaut or just an escort, mm -hmm. and the astronaut was there, whatever. And um, there were quite a few. Of course, I, I don't remember all of them. I do remember Amanda Blake from Gunsmoke. Do you remember? Yeah, that? Look okay. sure, Kitty. And she was, yes, and she was, uh, I'm sure it was Al Warden. The, the most uh, decent uh, runner of a brothel you ever saw on TV, Kitty. Well, <laughs> and they, uh, she and her husband and the, the doctor from Gunsmoke, I milk, don't remember. Uh, his, milk, uh, milk, something yeah. that, okay. They came down because they were, um, I'm pretty sure it was Al Warden's guests, and they invited um, Fran and I uh, to meet them for dinner, and we met them at the at the hotel, which was the only, well, I think one of the only hotels in, in Cape Canaveral now, mm -hmm. and it was, and, and they had drinks, you know, we had drinks, we walked to the restaurant at the hotel hmm. and had, had dinner and, and, um, I mean, it was great. We couldn't believe we were with some, Yeah, you know, Gunsmoke, number one okay, show yeah. of the time, 1969. And, uh, and wow. I, I've got a, uh, I guess I sent her something and, um. Milburn and, Stone, Marty says. Oh, gosh. Doctor. Milburn Stone. Uh, and, uh, I got a letter from her thanking me for what I, I sent her some, and it, it had to be some, uh, I don't know, whatever, huh. what it was. But, uh, yeah, and... But so many people, so, Barbara Eden was Barbara, there, uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Eugenie, yep, Barbara yep, Eden. Yep. Uh, we talked about that, where your friend Bob Pearson, that was a technician there, we'll see a picture of Bob here in a minute, said Neil Armstrong whipped those headphones off so bad and crashed the lunar module <laughs> when it came over to the intercom that she was in the building. And uh, people would get excited. Yeah, uh -huh. I mean, it's, it's, it's just because the astronauts, it wasn't all about them. You know, it was about everything and everybody, and it's just kind of, and that was the old way of looking at it. Well, looking back at that picture real quick, uh, these 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 uh, are computerized buildings, sort of mm -hmm. compartments that have visual graphics all around them. That's that's what this this odd, this, uh, odd looking shapes are mm -hmm. are actual cameras and video equipment that go into the windows so that the astronauts inside are simulated looking out at space or uh, the moon mm -hmm. as it was here. So uh, and of course Massachusetts Institute of Technology built the DSKY computers. We'll show DSK, you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they were a wild lot to say the least in the 60s. Uh, 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 there's uh, Luminaries is the uh, name of the program, Sunburst and Luminaries. I think Sunburst I was that. the program for the um, uh, command module. And uh, there's a book written by that, Sunburst and Luminaries, by the guy who wrote it. I forget his name. And I, so I, I didn't bring, I didn't that, bring book, that. I have But it. Uh, they talk about uh, smoking pot out there and just all kinds of crazy stuff. So the astronauts, you'll see, make fun of that here. Uh, in a bit, but that's the entrance into the uh, lunar module simulator. Uh, quite a historic thing. Should have been saved as an archive. They just threw it away, didn't they? And like uh, they there's the DSKY desk computer. It was so important. Uh, 64 kilobytes of memory. That's right, 64 kilobytes of memory. Everything was entered as a noun, verb, with the numbers and minuses. Uh, an amazing uh, techn uh, uh, computer achievement for back then. Another look at that. And it um, lets you know how the um, electronics were back then because all the space underneath the glass uh, line, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. that's where all, if something went wrong with anything in any of the simulators, that's where you would go to fix it underneath. Underneath. Yeah, and, and pick up the floor and all everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. The, the world's uh, best uh, game 
uh, computer game ever is what a lot of people talked about that it was. It was so high tech, it blew people away. You had the German Chancellor come in there and just all kinds of people, right? Oh, yes, definitely. Yep. Well, there's you with Bob Pearson at our 50th anniversary of Apollo 11. And Bob passed away a couple years ago. We miss him dearly. You yeah. were good friends with yep. him. And his, uh, and uh, he's uh, he bragged about landing on the moon, rightfully so, more than anybody. And he also said, I knew the astronauts more than anybody else. There's Bob with his record that is filled with... Uh, Neil Armstrong came in at 5.15, Buzz at 5.20, started a simulation at 5.30, yep. crashed yep. 30 times, reset, you know. Uh-huh, yeah. What do you got to say about your good friend Bob there? There, well, he's, uh, he was he was special. And when um, what he went to Houston uh, for Apollo 11. Yes. And, and because... Maybe there was a glitch, mm -hmm. you know, here and there, and he went to Houston immediately. And, uh, I mean, he was always, he was from Michigan, and um, he came up to see us, uh, my husband and I, uh, years ago when he was visiting his family. Mm -hmm. Just always, uh, always a gentleman, just, you know, mm -hmm. helpful. Just, just one of the, I don't know how many Apollo people you've kept in touch with, but you've always kept in touch with Bob and several of the other secretaries and so forth. It's a, a tight knit family, no, like a, well, a, an athletic family in a well, way, right? Yeah, no, that's that's true. Because uh, I mean, we all know that um, what we consider living and working in the best of times, mm -hmm. and uh, and now we're all kind of uh, <laughs> the same age or. Um, you know, and and we just kind of go back in our memory. We don't what recognize we the world we grew up in. No, some it, some it, ways good, some, some ways bad. just yeah. we regret. You know? And and that and uh, but um, uh, well, uh, Bob was very popular because mm -hmm. he was in the, the same department I was, the lunar module department. Well, we miss him. He, we had some great stories out of him. Uh, Actually, uh, Stay Curious uh, uh, had just started when uh, he passed nice. away, and and uh, I, I talked to him a few weeks before he passed away and wanted him to get better so he could come and tell these stories yeah, on his own. But yeah. you help him live uh, with, uh, and, and all of us here do. So just one of the many, many people we've uh, missed in the last five years here at the Space Museum. Yeah. Well, let's talk about you and your <laughs> mushroom dress there, lady. Oh, yeah. Holy cow. Well, that, that looks like laughing. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it should out. have been, yeah. I, maybe I could have gotten Who are you there with? Um, oh, Scott. Oh, that Apollo 15. Uh -huh. Jim Irwin and um, Scott, David. Dave, Dave, David Scott. And um, and that was before the launch. And, yeah, I did make that dress. And just because you mentioned that a while ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but... Uh, and they were just... You know why I mentioned that? That's another lost art. That was sort of like, you know, not all women. I'm not putting them in a class there. But it's a lot of your friends enjoyed making their own clothes. Well... Uh, my mother made clothes. My sister gave us a try at it. It's kind of like a rite of passage. Can you make your own little jumper or... or, or, or the, mat the material was affordable, just like just like the food that uh, that you had yeah, on the right. other. You know, it was all affordable, and you could make something that cost less than what you would buy it in the store. But it wasn't all that expensive in the store either. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, yeah. Uh, well, going from this that dress again to this dress, I want you to share a story that we talked about <laughs> about uh, uh, how the times were. And uh, critical of how women dressed. Oh, back then, yeah. And that wasn't even, um, let's see. This was after the Gemini program finished. And we left uh, Cape Canaveral and, <clears throat> and went to the uh, flight crew training building on Merritt Island. And I was in the uh, command module simulation section. And the um, supervisor of that department would give us um, reviews like every six months or so and you know that was 
60 years ago or something. I don't remember what I wore, but it was a similar dress, a short dress. And I was one of the tallest people there anyways. And after the review, um, he criticized me He's about the length of, of the dress. And I, I'm, I'm going to say, I bet it was a dress I bought, not made. Cause I, but anyways, and he said, I shouldn't wear uh, something that short at work. And I just said simply, well, if you're going to criticize my clothes, then you, you better start buying them. <laughs> well, okay. that didn't last very long because then I was transferred to the lunar module simulation section with a different supervisor. Uh, so Got rid that, of the troublemaker and uh, uh, but, in a short uh, <laughs> skirt. <laughs> but, oh, and, that and was, we don't say it as a sexist way. We say that was the times. And uh, tell us about the pants. We couldn't, women couldn't wear pants until about 1970 at NASA, at the Kennedy Space Center. Is that and, right? And, uh, and it may have been, I left in 1971, and I was, and then I transferred because they would diff, change in personnel, so I went from the lunar module simulation section to the um, mission support office, which was in the, what was then called the MSOB, um, mm -hmm. Man spacecraft, spacecraft operations, operations building. building, and now it's um, uh, Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong. Yeah. It, yeah, and um, uh, it, so, and I think I went there maybe. Uh, well, it was after we landed on the moon, mm -hmm. 1970. Well, that's but, interesting. Yeah, Couldn't wear pants till 1970. Right. 70. Uh, there's women that have worked Slack. at KSC that have never worn anything but pants, I'm sure. No, right, right. Uh, 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 in, in the history there. But, uh, yeah, the equal rights for women, a, a big battle of the many that you and I grew up in as baby boomers mm -hmm. witnessed in there. And uh, there you are at the front lines of that sort of thing. Uh, well, another colleague of yours uh, was involved with a trend that is a happy trend, Snoopy. Snoopy, yep, yeah, that's Jamie. Jamie, at the time, Jamie Flowers, and is that's Apollo Ten. Mm -hmm. Yes, coming down from the um, the mission support office door is right in front of where they're going, right next to the elevator that they're going on, and uh, Jamie was working in Houston, and for every every man launch. Uh, NASA would transfer somebody from the um, astronaut office to come to the Cape to help help us out. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, and and it and it worked, uh, hmm. uh, and it was great. So, well, good luck, Charm. There, of course, Apollo Ten had to have two call names because of two space vehicles. The command module was Charlie Brown, Sorry. lunar module was Snoopy. Uh, that was some money to be spent buying a, a big stuffed animal like that there was like 20 bucks back in well the day. back and then yeah uh and i don't i don't remember where where it came from but he was pretty popular well that's an iconic picture with the general tom stafford but everybody got in the act the other astronauts gene cernan and john young <laughs> <laughs> tried to wrestle oh, yeah. it from Jamie, it looks like. <laughs> Jamie won. <laughs> in these in these pictures there. But uh, that twenty dollar stuffed toy, that's two hundred bucks back in nineteen sixty, every bit of it. Yeah, yeah. Back, that's oh, over a yeah. hundred dollar stuffed toy for, oh, for sure, sure. For in sure. there. Uh and of course uh Snoopy become the mascot of safety. This is a two hundred dollar poster all day long. Mission success is in your hands. Subtle reminder to do your job or we could lose yeah. our lives is what it yeah. boiled down to, yeah. right? Yeah. A lot of subtle reminders. There's a great story there. <laughs> yes. Uh, Ken Mattingly was um, originally going to be on Apollo 13, and that was his birthday. And um, that's in the uh, like crew training building. And there's on the... There's Ken, then there's Fran, Laura, and then there's me on the right. And uh, what's Fran's last name? Fran Slaughter. Okay, Fran Slaughter and Laura. And and I don't remember her last. And you're on the right. And I'm there. on the right. Yeah. yeah. Look and, at look at how how I just I mean the the physique, just the fitness mm -hmm. of, of TK. There's just a look at it. he's just a wow. Yeah. That's his thirty fourth birthday. I think it says there, Marty. Is that right? He was planning, he was trained for Apollo 13, got scrubbed because he was exposed to measles. Then yeah. he flew to the moon on Apollo 16. 
And uh, so the middle gal there, you've got a, a story oh. about her that Al Bean went up and needed something from there, her. And yeah, Al uh, was on Apollo 12. And Fran and I both did shorthand, stenographer. We're stenographers. That's our, you know, formal title, clerk stenographer. And Laura was just a clerk. She didn't do shorthand. And one day, I don't know, uh, Fran and I were out of the office. Maybe we'd gone over to headquarters or something because we also did, made travel arrangements for our engineers and all of that. And um, when we, we came back, Laura said, Albine came out and uh, said he wanted to dictate a letter. And, and we said, did you or, you know, should we find them? And she said, no, no. I told him I didn't take dictation. I didn't do shorthand. And he said, fake it. And he started <laughs> dictating. So I just wrote things down. <laughs> and then he goes into his office, probably, you know, went back to the simulator, came back. She had typed it up and he signed it. And she said he signed it and it's in the mail now. <laughs> oh, okay. So we just, you know, we, we just, we managed to do what needed to be done. I mean, whether we had knew about it or knew how to do it, or um, we could find somebody to to yeah. help, and um, we the, didn't, you know, the good old sixties. And and actually, I I watched a story about a TikTok challenge called Lazy Girl, where pe girl, women are trying to just do the least they have to do at work, and oh, bragging about it. Oh, that, that, well, TikTok ought to get, uh, you know. <laughs> get get with it because we did we did um i mean many times we didn't leave at five o'clock i think our hours were maybe seven thirty to four or something like that and if we needed to come in early we would and if we needed to stay late we did mm -hmm. and uh i mean sometimes we'd stay till nine or ten o'clock oh, just I, your salary not overtime no yeah just we didn't get overtime i mean it, we we did when it was available, but we would get a uh, uh, notice that if we're working, at, you know, on these days, you're not going to get paid. I mean, after hours, and there's no overtime available. And if you're working on these days, overtime hmm. money was available. So, you know, you uh, maybe we got paid half the time that we were hmm. overtime from our regular. And one night... Um, Fran and I, I know we both worked like all night because there was, it was Apollo 9 and um, um, something was missing that the crew was going to take on board. I don't remember what that was, uh -huh. Apollo, you know, but, and we just waited, typed things. I wasn't typing, you know, hour by hour. It was just, when the engineer came out said you got to make a change in this we'd retype the page send it back you know and um i don't know left there about five o'clock four or five o'clock in the morning went home took a shower found some place to have breakfast went back to work huh that was you know we never the secretaries us or the engineers we never thought about fought like or argued saying i'm not i'm not working that late no mm -hmm. i'm not hmm. uh we change plans or cancel something um like i said just we made sure that we got our job done of course the underlying fact of all of this in your job hazel is you're in a race to the moon with the soviet union all right mm -hmm. and that did you have pictures of President Kennedy up on the wall? Or was it, of course, Nixon was the president uh, for a lot of it, the moon landings. But, uh, I mean, how did that, was there a moon race feeling in the flight crew training building? Uh, yes, just because we wanted to honor President Kennedy's wish and demand. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't really a demand, but more of a, a wish challenge. and challenge. It's wish and country, challenge, yeah. yeah. And that's what we wanted to do and make sure that it was done. Mm -hmm. What did the secretarial pool, if you wish, who did you have your money on was going to be the first man on the moon? Who, who thought had the most skills 
that would be tapped at? You know, um, I can't, I couldn't say for sure, but okay. I know we were happy Neil Armstrong because um, he wasn't, I mean, he wasn't um, any, on any military side, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it was, and he was such a gentleman and just quiet, just did things and got it done. And that, you know, that we didn't really have any say so and we didn't talk about it i don't remember ever mm -hmm. really talking about it um about any of the crew on any of the missions okay well everything coming at you so fast it's uh, paperwork 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 well, right yeah uh yeah uh marty's mentioned this do you think there's enough paperwork generated in the apollo program that we could have just stacked it all up and walked to the moon <laughs> probably <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I know how much paperwork I still have, and I'm surprised I still have yeah, that much. Exactly. But, um, but th you know, that's, we didn't have the advantage of a, a screen. Hmm. Well, we're going to have a fun time, show you a fun little thing here in the next few minutes. The Apollo 12 parody. Now, the Apollo 12 crew was truly one of the greatest buddy road trips probably of all time. They were a very cohesive crew. They were they were close to get, like, close Pete Personal Conrad, too. Uh, Dick Bob, Gordon, Albie, and Albie, uh, Dick, Dick Gordon, Gordon, all Navy pilots, very close to death. Did you see that? In, yeah. Oh, yeah. In there. Uh, a lot of prankstering going on. Uh, always a good sense of humor. I mean, like, even if, even if there was a lot of pressure or something like that, somebody, not just to us secretaries, but, you know. Sure. Yeah. Give me your Space Cowboys book there. Oh, Sorry to interrupt no, you. No, that's all right. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> See, okay. It's coming, Hazel. <laughs> no, this is this is a lot of fun. Space Cowboys is a great book. Some of you have the real Space Cowboys by uh, Ed Buckaby, who was Buckby with Wally Sherrod. Buckby was uh, uh, the uh, information officer, I believe, at Johnson Space Center. Uh, it's a great little book, uh, easy read. It's got a DVD on the back with a bunch of interesting things on it. Uh, an interview with Warner Von Braun, the 30th anniversary of Skylab documentary. Uh, a, uh, and the Apollo 12 gotcha film, they call it. The gotcha film, all right? Uh, after the Freedom Flight 7 on there. And uh, Hazel has a role in this gotcha film. So hang on to your hats here as we take you to the Apollo 12 parody that you can see on youtube and i know a bunch of you'll be uh watching it after our stay curious but our stay curious is on youtube of course and just to give you a flavor the astronauts drove out there in sports cars and their their stingray and a station wagon out there uh they had a mixed up type of flight plan all right the three stooges were involved in it all right now you have a copy of this given to you it's your retirement or, or going away thing there astronauts had a lot of fun the two moonwalkers on on the moon he conrad can't. and bean he... on there did all kinds of antics they showed there while uh ed uh, or uh dick gordon was on the command module and that's where he had a visitor <laughs> in a green and white polka dot bikini you no <laughs> Do you want me to sing? Those were the days, my friend. <laughs> he you. thought they'd never end. Exactly, oh. exactly. But the fun part, and there is the astronaut. Yes, and, and do you want me to tell yes, you who, uh -huh. who was who? Sure. Well, yeah, that was do. That, that was Al Warden. Uh huh. And <laughs> you remember about doing this? This is quite an elaborate production. The whole I know, fifteen I, minute parody. I I try I tried to rewatch that a couple of days ago, but I. I I uh, mixed up my TV and I couldn't oh. I couldn't see it, but um, well, you're but beautiful. It, it, of was, it was it was fun. It was fun, and there was a and I don't remember her name. There was a gal from she, and she worked in Houston, lived in Houston, and she was at the um, the beginning of that, and she represented um, like uh, yeah, some of it and, and, yeah, and, I... and 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 the and the rain and like the statue. That went on the um, 
the, yeah, and, the, and the regular, the regular uh, Columbia, yeah, pictures, Columbia pictures, yeah. and then lightning hits, and then all of a sudden, you know, she's just there, uh -oh. <laughs> and all that. I wasn't the only. That's, no, there's a lot of other people, in there. Yeah. and they, the, the MIT guys are are uh, per, uh, in the back room as hippie guys are drinking and smoking stuff on there, which uh, somebody on YouTube, uh, when I looked it up there, the comments wanted to know if this was any of the Apollo 15 crew, and you did, you said they weren't. Uh, but uh, 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 and, and, and then one comment about you is, that lady sure has it going on. <laughs> this was the comment about you on, on the YouTubes. Of course, mission success everybody's back uh getting off the, the moon and mission control and uh you're saying goodbye to uh, dick gordon there which is actually al bean in that gorilla costume there so uh a lot of fun there hazel there There's, thanks for being uh, a good al to, uh yeah, yeah. I said, who did i say al bean al, yeah al warden was actually in there uh, thanks for being a good sport about that, oh, but it's, but you can see it. It's fun. Gives you uh, a flavor of things that uh, you know. Not sure they could pull that off again, uh, like <laughs> that. But uh, uh, and they had a little retirement thing for you. You said uh, at the beach house, and I thought you said they gave you the sixteen millimeter copy. No, of that. yeah, and and that's in the uh, that's in the box. And actually, no, and that was when. That came out, and our group from the flight crew training building went over to the beach house. Hmm. Well, we're enjoying Hazel Banks here. CCAC was her maiden name that the astronauts would know her as, and you meet a few astronauts every now and then. Uh, and it's all I got to see one encounter with you, and there's Lee Solid on the left, and Al Warden on the right at a Florida Institute of Technology Apollo 50th anniversary uh, program last uh, November. 2019 yeah. and mr warden passed away in march of 2020 so uh, after a stroke and maybe covid so uh, this is one of his last public appearances and uh he's over there was just so nice talking to all the the the, the, the students and everybody there to yeah. see this symposium it was a panel discussion he was in two or three panels looking good talking to everybody and i went up to him shortly after i made this picture and i said sir i don't know you but uh, I know you know Hazel Seacack, and she's here and like to see you. He, I thought he's gonna knock me over, <laughs> all right? Because when he laid eyes on you, that was what he looked like, Hazel. <laughs> he knocked me out of the no, way. No, no, oh Hazel. Gosh, oh so he gosh, said, "Where's yeah. Hazel?" And uh, he was so surprised and happy to see you. And uh, uh, you know, just uh, you have moments like this uh, just, come and go, don't yeah, you? Yep, yeah, yep. And uh, I'm just lucky and. Uh, you know, every day's a gift, and you, that was a real gift. You really, you recently saw um, um, David Scott, I think, too, at a, kind of an event. Didn't yes, you see David in in, a... uh, in Houston, because um, not sorry, not in Houston, in uh, in Orlando, and it was, uh, and I had. There you go. Yeah. Those were two of our two buddies guys. there, Mark yeah. Usiak and Carlton Bailey. Uh, through my buddies in there, our supporters of the museum, just like you, Hazel. We're so happy we've got attracted some some wonderful people like Mark Usiak and Carlton Bailey to to offer what they can to our uh, museum. Marty's talking on the Usiak family microphone. There's brother Tom uh, uh, and wife contributing to that. But uh, I put this in there just to show to everybody that's met this man. He's Uncle Al. Yeah, really. Yeah, I mean, um, well thought of, respected, and and. Uh, Show me the book there. Oh, the while, we're, while we're talking about yeah. him there, uh, there's a one of the last serious shots of him ever. He wrote this book uh, that I need to read, "Falling to Earth." Uh, so, uh, oh wait, where we go? "Falling to Earth." There, Fall, "Falling to Earth," and. Uh, that's one I haven't read. You know, there's there's so many of them out there, but uh, I need to get to. He also wrote a book of poetry, and Al Warden is the first man to make a interplanetary spacewalk while the voyage from the moon was coming back. Uh, he did this 51 years ago yesterday, where he did an extra vehicle, extra vehicular activity or spacewalk uh, to retrieve film canisters. 
old celluloid uh, film up there, uh, uh, and uh, that he took pictures from the scientific instrument bay. And uh, this is uh, Doug Forrest. That is not a photograph, Hazel. That is a pencil drawing uh, of the EVA, as our good friend Doug Forrest uh, did uh, that. And uh, I don't think he had the opportunity to show Al before he did that. So um, we like sharing that memory, and those memories are out there at our Apollo monuments and the shuttle monuments at the end there at Space View Park. Those handprints are at the bottom. The pylons have the names of people like you and Marty Winkle on them there uh, as being uh, contractors or NASA employees. And, of course, when Al passed away, somebody put a rose out there oh. on his uh, handprints out there. Uh, we still got That's some nice. Apollo-era plaques to fill up there, none around Al's there, uh, when we took this uh, three years ago. Uh, God bless him. What a great guy. And, uh, you know, our Space View Park that we have as our backdrop here. You're out there. Those those uh, name prints are etched in stone, and there's Hazel in the middle column, about four down. Uh, your friend Fran Slaughter's on the other side. Yeah. Uh, Charles Berry here on the left yeah. column. He was the NASA doctor there. that was in the news all the time. Yeah, see, Larry Thompson, who was in charge of um, uh, command module mm -hmm. uh, section. To, Everybody uh, just thrown up yeah. there at random, so, so to speak, of on the Gemini program and so uh, instrumental in learning what we had to learn in two quick years, 1965 and 66, yeah. to make the moon landing possible. What do you remember about Gemini where you started? That it, it was just um, incredible. Uh, first, And it wasn't just meeting astronauts, but <laughs> also the... Uh, Gemini Simulator was in the manned spacecraft, uh, I mean, the uh, Mercury spacecraft building mm -hmm. at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station back then that was called. And I remember uh, when I first started working there, there were snakes as long as this room. Oh, my gosh, and, 10 feet. Yeah. And, and, uh, and our office was in uh, a mobile unit out the back door because there wasn't room on the inside for an a trailer. Tra trailer that's what it was <laughs> and one one day and i was going through the back door and a snake ran in front of me not one of the really big ones but it was just a, a, gra a garden snake mm -hmm. but it shocked me so much i ran up the stairs and slipped and fell on the stairs and walked in the and went in the trailer and closed and locked the door because i thought, <laughs> locked the door <laughs> what the, you know uh but it, but it was like okay they said old snake knocked on that you know, door you say you're not coming in <laughs> but um and that's how that's how it was back at, at the cape canaveral air force station back then because mm -hmm. it wasn't all cleared out and all this and that but the uh and we could watch the gemini liftoff really literally from outside of our our building walking up the stairs i mean i mean it, it was i don't really know how far away it was but it was far enough so we didn't need to be enclosed in something hmm. and that i mean that was something and oh and and then and then just getting used to how important this was to the country and the 400 odd thousand people that were working for the uh you know, to land on the moon to mm -hmm. help whoever was doing that it was just incredible. And we got, and when I uh, later, when I was in the uh, mission support office, I mean, it would, and I know it would happen in other offices too, but we get phone calls from people in organizations that didn't believe that we were actually doing this. Hmm. And they would say, and, um, you know, why are you? airing this but we know it's not true and all this and that and i was as nice as i could be hmm. and which sometimes isn't nice but um uh you know and just say well then uh don't listen to it because it is happening <laughs> you know if it bothers you turn you know turn the tv off or whatever because it, it is true well hazel you go home after work or it's a weekend where you're not working 
and you see Time Magazine or Life Magazine with an astronaut or story about a Gemini mission in the newspaper or something, uh, how'd that make you feel knowing you were uh, uh, behind the scenes? But yeah, uh, it, it gave me a lot more confidence mm -hmm. and um, uh, it, just a, a lot more pleasure too, just to know that it was that important. It wasn't like uh, my first job working for a real estate person, mm -hmm. which uh, and mm -hmm. a different level that was important, but mm -hmm. something that was globally pop, global pop popular, um, you know, did because, you ever feel that that the eyes of the world were were looking at your little, not specifically you, of course. No, but... no, no, yeah, not me or anybody, but yeah, we realized that, and mm -hmm. and that's what gave us incentive to always try to do the right thing. Well, what a fascinating career you've had for a fascinating lady. Uh, Hazel is class all the way. One of your favorite astronauts I know is Mr. Al Bean. This is to Fran, but I think you, I've seen this on one of your... you got a lot of yeah. memorabilia. Some of it you got rid of a few years ago. Um, uh, to Fran, Super Secretary, Al Bean there. Uh, and, of course, Al Bean 50 years ago was commanding the Skylab 2, uh, the second crewed mission uh, patch. Actually, the, the, the engineers called it Skylab 3. Uh, this is signed in our our um, our museum here in one of our cases there, beta cloth with that on there. Nice little souvenir to have. Yeah, and you've got some several things here. I just wanted to show that crew real quick. Yeah. Because they've all passed oh, yeah. away except for Jack Lausma. Jack Lausma. And Jack's 87. I've had the pleasure of driving him around to a couple Good. of meals here Good. on the Space Coast. Yeah. Another Michigander all and the way. And the gentleman, you know, really, yes. And um, we were both going to uh, an astronaut scholarship fundraiser in Phoenix. Yeah. 20 years ago, 15, I mean, a long time ago. And um, and I was still living in Detroit. And we were uh, waiting for the plane. And, and anyways, uh, and I noticed, I think, I know that man. I know. And I went up and talked to him, and he remembered me. Oh, did he? Yeah. Jack, yeah. Uh, that's, and that was a long time ago. Uh, he's an awesome guy. Uh, also wanted to just... Uh, Three moonwalkers. One is still with us. David Scott on the left. There's Al Bean. Just Al always seemed to be in a good mood in every picture no, I've seen of him. Really? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that that was him. Uh -huh. the, uh, of course, Gene Cernan, Gino on the yeah. right. That was him. You got a couple then, keepsakes from him. Of course, he turned to art, uh, became a, Al, an important Al artist Bean. of the Apollo era. Yeah. And you have a few of his. Uh, he gave you a couple items there. You bought them along well, the way. Yeah, I bought them. This was 2008. Another uh, uh, Earth Earth Rise mm -hmm. uh, from. This is actually one of 125 uh, uh, artists um, proofs uh, of that gorgeous, gorgeous Earth Rise there with his nice signature on it. And, and you've got another thing and, there. And this is a moon rise. Uh, 2017. Yeah, I like this moonrise. That's a, that's a very, you don't see Al doing Al being doing many moonrises. Well, actually, he moon. called it Monet's moon. Monet's that's what, moon. That's what he called it. Okay, actually, to be oriented with the north at the top. Well, no, he's got. No, because the signatures. I know it's yeah, on the bottom. Yeah, he's, but uh, uh, beautiful. Uh, and if you don't know Al Bean's art, you've got his book there. Uh, with, with Andy Chalkin helping him write it. I'm sure most of you have this in your library. And Al wrote you a couple nice things there. He said, uh, uh, hi, hi, Jamie, friend. Oh, this is on a letter. No, yeah, but, and, oh. and that's, yeah, and, but that's. To Hazel, who helped take the impossible dream that was around come true. Oh, to, who, to help take the impossible dream that was Apollo come true. The adventure was uh, the, the adventure was better for all of us because you gave everything you had to do, to the work and that had to, that be, had done. to be done. And yeah. that's what all of us did, not just me. He's got interesting handwriting. Al does this kind of 
difficult to read like my handwriting but what a what a nice thing there uh from al bean uh you've got many personal things uh there's a letter you, you wrote him wrote in reply him. back there that's cool yeah. there's another uh from al bean uh another Just, keepsake uh, uh, what does he say there? Uh, to Jamie, Fran, and Hazel, the letter and photo brought back a lot of super memories. Thanks for keeping in touch with admiration. And this is uh, Al's uh, stationery at one point in time there. With his, they put uh, he made a, a painting with Dick Gordon on the moon with him and um, Pete Conrad and did, did, I'm sure Hazel. I know you know that they're such great friends. That they're buried within sight of each other at Arlington Cemetery. I think actually Conrad and Bean are. Uh, Bean was the last one to go, but they're. Yeah. Uh, that was the family. Well, that was their request was their to honor request. them as a family oh, there. Gosh. And uh, here's something we printed up there. Uh, Walt Cunningham. Nice oh. thing to say to you. Uh, to Hazel from the good old days. And that's a great book to read, The All American, American Boys. Boys. That's one of my favorites. Uh, in there and hazel they gave you a big card you've got a card that's worth a thousand dollars if it's worth 10 cents <laughs> because of well <laughs> uh, that's some so. goodies on the inside <laughs> autographed in there but this is how people loved you and thought about you that uh the apollo 15 crew on autographed on the front mm -hmm. that's well, when yeah when when i wherever left. you go and whatever you do we'll be watching yeah uh how, how cool is that to have that uh as a young lady in her 20s still right no, right right yeah. oh yeah i was i was 23 when i moved to michigan wow and it was october 1st it was a it was a day that from 18 uh, to 23 you saw the world change right in front of your eyes yeah and you're 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 writing the answering the phone calls and pushing the intercom buttons and all that stuff right and telling people well, if, if you're not going to answer the phone tell them not to call you <laughs> yeah right exactly there and of course the culmination of that whole history of american space age that we celebrate here at the space museum that you so embrace is the international space yeah. station yeah uh 22 years continuously occupied and and uh, thanks it's to special. al bean and pete conrad two astronauts that uh, uh pioneered our sky lab and inspired yeah and inspired the motion to get going in there so hazel you've been a great sport putting you know, through all this again uh we've had uh it's where, always where, a... where'd my where'd my list go i dropped it on the ground again there we know that uh, gary gerald is watching uh gail young hannis hey gail Gail, you know Gail from uh, uh, oh, yeah. uh, the museum oh, here, gosh. Gail Hannes. Hi, Gail. Yeah, good to see. Uh, say hi moved. to Gail. Yeah, there. she moved. They moved. Yeah, I know. They moved for their grandchildren, yeah. I think, in the Lakeland area. And thank you, uh, Gail. She also helped me get on my legs here at the museum. Uh, she and the mayor, Jim Tully, helped tutor me. Gary Gerald's watching there in Collins, Georgia. Cynthia Rossi's local. Uh, Carlton Bailey's uh Looking for a deal for peanuts for those squirrels he has in his backyard. <laughs> he said the peanuts have rise like tripled uh, in commodities oh, lately. Wow. Gary Folsom, thank you for watching, Gary. Robert Laws in Dundee, Scotland. You oh, know that. Yeah. You've been to Dundee? No, but I have um, I was born not well in northeastern England. And Dual citizenship you yeah, have too, right? Yeah. You've been to Scotland. I yes, know. I have. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I, I visit next time I go. Good. Well, uh, the Sidewalk Science Center says hi. Thank you. Uh, uh, and uh, watch and stay curious today, Max. Uh, and we want to get Max on the show here. Uh, Rochelle Kenny's watching. All right. Rochelle might be the astronomer I met up uh, the uh, uh, Astronomy on Tap Orlando. Uh, Let's so Della Porta's watching. Vera Riley, Space Monkey. Oh. You know Vera Riley? Uh, Vera, yeah. Vera? Yep. All right. Say hi to Vera. Uh, Tom Usiak's watching. Larry Pushkar, he's another Michigander up there. And uh, Bill Whiting. Bill, hope you made it safely home. And we enjoyed your pictures of the Neil Armstrong Museum in Waffle House. Yes. Across yes. the street I'll, there. I'll stop there next time I'm up there. It's a very nice one. Very clean, 
Good. Cliff Watson is in Pomona, Australia. Thank you for 200 mm -hmm. stars there, Cliff. Dave Stangy, of course, Dave be watching. He's a big Michigander. And Hazel, too. Connie McDaniel being our faithful watcher today. So, uh, you know, as and we we always give a shout out to you. You've watched it all over the world, really, haven't well, you? Well, I tried. Times. Yeah. Yeah. Tried in it's... there. Hazel, thank you so much for recapping this fabulous career of yours and, and taking us behind the scenes a little bit with uh, humanizing some of these astronauts. Oh. Uh, is there something that you'd like to share today yeah. that you um, thought about? It's just a, a pleasure that uh, Stay Curious keeps the past, present, and future going, you know, and um, and reminds us how important the past was. Did you want to read what you had there oh, uh, going out? Because I know you have there, a nice way. But we do well, want to thank you, Karen Conklin, and our whole staff and everyone from the bottom of our hearts. You are a fabulous financial supporter of our museum. Uh, you not only help us, you're very involved with the Brevard Humane Society and other things. Uh, you see the value and I think the good karma of giving back that, when you have, right? The, yes. I mean... I'd rather give back than just not give it all, okay. you know. And we've got some great people out there that have supported that's, our museum down the line, yeah. and and uh, but uh, your your uh, financial contributions to Stay Curious has helped us buy a new laptop computer that we're going to take on the road okay, and do good. some things that we're testing with, and all of you that contribute money, it goes to a worthy cause. Uh, and not just our general fund here. We try to earmark it for things. So, Hazel, take us out with uh, your feelings about uh, Apollo and your career here. Well, I'll just say, okay. The Apollo program gave our country goals, discipline, role models, and heroes. When the entire world looked upon us with admiration and expectation, our only choice was to succeed, and we did. Apollo opened the doors of opportunity to the world, and today's space exploration endeavors are proof of our achievements, Be all before the Internet. <laughs> before. Sorry, Internet people. <laughs> yeah. But, um, well, we love you. You've, you've been uh, such a good person to me and helping me uh, get the lay of the land of first the Space Coast here and and all you do is just terrific and well, once you pleasure, know that you, you mean a lot to us so uh continue mm -hmm. doing what you're doing and and happy trails on the next trip that you take thanks um I'm, i'll be going to egypt in september ah you had to put that off because of covid i remember <laughs> yeah, where did you just come back from uh canada yeah mm -hmm. uh, and um smoky it, Canadian Rockies. Um, I mean, smoky air. Oh, no. <laughs> Canada, thinking, we think smoky about mountains. Smoke. No, that's in Virginia. No, um, very little smoky air. We uh, flew into Calgary yeah. and went to the Calgary Stampede and then started touring, went down to uh, Glacier National mm -hmm. Park in Montana and then up northeast, you know, northwestern Canada. And it was, it was beautiful just looking at... Uh, the nature, the, the habitat, and just the mountains, it was incredible. Well, you've deserved it, first uh, secretary to astronauts and then executive secretary uh, to Mr. Ralph Wilson of the Buffalo Bills, who in fact helped create the Super Bowl. Uh, and what an amazing woman and career you've had, and thank you for sharing it with well, us today. Marty, for thank me. you for a good Streamlabs job there. I see your note there. Uh, to me and uh, until tomorrow now tomorrow we'll just give you a heads up and we'll put it on Facebook we're going to interview Winston Scott we might go live at 4 30 or even closer to 5 o'clock so we don't want to re uh, uh, just record the show and then air it later because uh, he's in the building and he's doing a talk with some of the Japanese students of Florida Japan oh, wow. Winston Scott uh, lives on the Space Coast here tremendous uh, man and tremendous astronaut and a great story to share. He's been on Stay Curious before, but uh, we get Winston on tomorrow. We're just going to talk about what he's doing now. He's the astronaut chief out there at Kennedy Visitors Complex, booking all the astronauts for Nick Thomas and his gang out there uh, to wrangle up and give their stories to you. So, Hazel, again, thank you very much. Uh, again, we it's love a you. You're, it's a pleasure. You're, you're an awesome person. And I echo uh, what our whole staff here says about you. Marty, thanks for a good Streamlabs job. And we hope to see you with 
Mr. Winston Scott tomorrow on Stay Curious. Until then, I'm Mark Marquette saying come visit our museum someday so we can bridge the space between us.